Good morning everyone and welcome to the channel. This very morning the tees went back onto grass. So the golf course is going to play a fair bit longer. Now the rain stopped for a couple of days would you believe. But alas the wind is up and very strong. Well I've been stood here for 12 minutes while the person in front and his girlfriend have been hitting multiple balls all over the place and they've only got one bag of clubs. So that's a skanky one along the ground and that is hardly surprising. And that's a nice V9 iron right through the back of the green. I am not impressed at the moment. I'm here supposed to be gathering information about how I'm striking the golf ball and all I'm doing is hacking it. I don't know about you but 27 minutes for the first hole I think might be a shade too long. However they did the decent thing and waited on the second tee and let me through. Do you know what? It's been a long time since I lost my rag on the golf course. Well, I've lost my rag. I'm absolutely shaking with anger. I stood in that fairway. Well, I stood on the tee box eight minutes beyond my tee time. I stood on the fairway about 12 minutes. I don't believe it. 27 minutes to play a hole. I need to calm down otherwise today is going to be ruined. I almost ruined it then actually with that tee shot. So the purpose of today is to try and find out how am I hitting it and what am I scoring now that the tee boxes have gone back a bit. And out of a wet line like that the answer is not hitting it very well at all but that's to be expected from that kind of lie. What I've got to do is hit fairways and greens and hopefully chip a bit better. March has been the wettest March we've had in a very long time and the golf courses are absolutely soggy. The third all carry up the hill it's a very wide tee and we're over here on the left with the wind hard off the left I'm trying to hit a draw and that just wasn't a draw. It's not my long suit at the moment. That's a chuff. And that's a bit better. So my scoring has been based really on my short game. And when the short game lets you down, it shows you just how bad your long game was. And that's another awful tee shot that's hit a tree down the right and left me a very long club in. Right. The fourth hole. Cracking tee shot. Right, so from the yellow tees on this course I get four shots. And I've used five of them. So the rest of it better be pretty good. Yeah, not a good start. I don't know about you, but standing in the middle of a fairway for 12 minutes doesn't do my game any good. So to borrow an expression from my friend Neville, the short game has basically been blowing smoke up the rear end. And it kids you into thinking you're doing better than you actually are. When the short game is ropey, as it is from time to time, then it really does show you up for how bad you're hitting the golf ball. First decent sandwich for a very long time, but you can see how short it is and how wide it is. 
I should be sticking sandwiches much closer than that. I've got rather a large hill to climb. How about you? Now I had my first lesson of, of the year this morning and the list of corrections is as long as your arm. And I, I am really wincing watching me swing the club here. Can't wait to get some practice in. Get it sorted out, hit those fairways, hit those greens and then perhaps I don't have to lean on my short game as much as I have been. Well, Gloucester was the course I joined as a complete beginner. And as a beginner, you always miss greens. The so little chip and runs like this through the rough is how I learned to play golf or make a score at golf. Number seven, gentle dog leg to the right, just needs a uh, a little fade, Simon, not that much. But it isn't as wide as it has been. So perhaps I am getting slightly better. How I'm supposed to learn something in this kind of wind and this kind of soggy ground is beyond me. You've got to keep trying. You can't give up. You can't give in to the conditions. Coming up is one of the most important shots in golf. The tidy up, even though it's for a bogey. You see how much effort I actually put into this. I don't walk up to it and bang it in, or rather miss. So number eight has got a pond right in the middle of the fairway. It's a bit awkward for me to get over. Some days you're gonna see me hitting an iron off this tee. Today I've elected to go down the left hand side. And instead of it fading, it went dead straight. So I'm chipping out. So some days you will see me hitting four and five iron off that tee box simply because the wind isn't behind and I'm not confident in getting over the water or going down the left side of the pond. This is a very familiar position, usually in two though instead of three. Make a lot of birdies on this hole. This is a new tee box. The old tee box had the yellow tees at 215 and the competition tees at 225. And on a day like this, it was just an absolute slog. So this new tee box makes the hole more manageable. Although I should be on the green. Now one of the things I'm having to do is to relearn putts. Gloss's greens look very, very flat, but in fact there's borrow on them. Borrow that's hard to see. Well then, apart from the opening three holes where I had steam coming out my ears, yeah, I lost my rag there and that's not a good thing. So the rest of it has been my usual kind of some good some bad save it with the wedge and the putter now the back nine there should be a little less wind even though we're going up the hill there's a few holes which should be out of the wind or at least the wind will be helping us now i've said that i hope i haven't put my foot in it right 10th hole number 10 
dog leg left, fairway slopes left to right. And then when you've been playing awful, you wonder, where the hell has a shot like that come from? High, straight, long. I think this is the hardest green on the course to actually find. And that wasn't the prettiest swing in the world. But I found the green. And then you look at a putt like this. As I say, the greens look flat. But there's a yard of borrow on this. Maybe more. These things I have to relearn very, very quickly. So, uh, right, this hole up the hill is the 11th. Now, the old 11th used to run all the way along there behind us, but when the golf club lost some land, this became the 11th. But I may still from time to time refer to it as the 12th. Old habits die hard. Now this green has been rebuilt throughout the winter. It's got quite a slope on it and you could put off the front of it, much like the 12th at Lillybrook. Although you've never seen me actually do that on camera, I don't think. Well, I don't remember. So what they've done is they've raised the front of the green and they've flattened the front half of the green just to make it fairer so you can actually stay on it if you've gone past the flag. Let's work out how far it is up this hill and uh, let's see what the green looks like now because I haven't played on it yet. This is my first time. One thing you need up this hill is height as opposed to length. And with that awful swing, I haven't got the height or the length. But I know this chip, although the front edge of the green looks completely different. And I remember what this putt does. Just outside the right and firm. One of the features of Gloucester is out of bounds. This is out of bounds all the way down the right. And there's so much of the out of bounds here is very much in play. Hence the stroke index for such a short hole. Now this is a brand new green and it's got a wicked step in it. Today it's on the lower level and the step it goes from left to right. You can see it there. So when the flag is on the right half of the green it's going to play somewhat more difficult. Bugger. The first of a number of ugly shots. Well, I know now why I'm doing it. But at the time, I was completely clueless. I mean, look how short I am. That is disgusting. But I'm making chips on very familiar shots. I've done this so many times in the past. 14, tees back, into the wind. So we need more than our hybrid today. We're going five wood. And that is rather smelly. Next we have a gouge and hopefully we'll get it up the fairway close enough to reach the green in three. That's not bad. And of course, because I'm striking it poorly, I'm clubbing up to a 5-iron. This is another ugly swing. Another low one to the right that Shot Tracer didn't want to have anything to do with. And I'm dead and buried up on the bank. And this is where the short game starts to work again.
15 is one of my favourites. The wind is off the right. Very nice wind to hit your fade into. But there's two extra bunkers down there on the right, just on driving distance. And this is yet another one of those stinkers where I've hit a pitching wedge, the grand total of 75 yards. That hasn't even reached the green. That is about as miserable as it gets. And yes, we do get our divots on this channel. Well, that chip's nothing to write home about. Now, I remembered this putt. It looks like there's two inches of break. But there's considerably more, as you can see. So Gloucester's flat greens aren't flat. Right, on to 16. The wind is off the left. The green slopes left to right. So I quite simply aim left of the flag. And then when the ball hits the green, the spin goes to the right and drags the ball back to the hole. I've hit it inside two feet so many times on this green with that technique. You can see the slope there. Landed on and the ball spins right. Assuming you're not using a pinnacle. 17 out of bounds all the way down the left. If you want to go for the green you've got to carry over all the out of bounds. I can hit anything from a 7 iron to the driver. Today I've opted for a hybrid and hit it like a wedge. Now I'm going to hit a wedge like a sand iron. Again, I don't even get the ball on the green. But at least now I know why. Final hole 18, it drops roughly 200 feet from tee to green, that is a hell of a lot of fun, cheerio! So then, I don't think I've been this bad since I was a beginner. You know, hitting a pitching wedge 75 yards is not very good. I think I might have a bit of the old reverse pivot going on. I don't know, I'm just going to have to get on the range and uh, see what's happening. And then see if I can get hold of Matt. I've, I've sent him a text but no reply, so I'm going to have to try him again get this thing sorted out and uh, get a few pounds off. Don't forget to subscribe. Cheerio.